Dr. Fucking, your 1030 is here. <laughs> I've been in that office. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, gosh, why are smelly hands so gosh darn funny? <laughs> so, there's a t- true story. I mean, uh, not that the last one wasn't. Like, I would tell that if it wasn't. Um, I'm, in, I'm in Hungary, um, and we're going to visit with gypsies. Um, this is something that, that has scared us inappropriately for months throughout the pre-production process. Um, gypsies, it's, it's, I don't know, it's kind of like someone saying you're going to cross the ocean in a very small boat. Um, you've heard so many stories of it. It's so fraught with danger. Um, and the, uh, the, the, the Roman or gypsy community uh, in parts of Eastern Europe um, have been marginalized so much and so much misinformation is out there uh, about them that you don't want to fall prey to guilty white man disease, which is excusing everything that you've heard of them and then throwing caution in the wind and you're basically going to get you know, robbed and, and raped and left by the side of the road um, and all your equipment taken. Um, but one of our cameramen who is, is uh, <laughs> Romanian um, is basically saying, yes, that's what's going to happen. Um, and, and, and he knows because he's lived over there. And throughout all the pre-production process, I keep saying to everybody, we should be listening to Adrian. He's lived over there. Um, but there we are once again in our van, same crew, the nine of us, and we drive about four or five hours outside of uh, Budapest, and uh, we get to this tiny little farm community, and we're greeted by something out of Fellini's Amarcord. I mean, the people, <laughs> they look uh, kind of strange and exotic from the front, but when you start talking to them, they're so like ferociously inbred and shit owl crazy, you can't even begin to deal with it. But they do have a 540 pound mangalitsa pig. Um, I don't know how many of you out there really like food. I do. Um, and I would toss my wife into a cauldron of boiling oil and blame it on that girl if I could eat certain foods in the world. That sounds horrific, but it's true. Um, and a real purebred mangalitsa um, is extremely exotic. You're eating a lot of restaurants these days. They say they have mangalitsa. They have mangalitsa strains. They don't actually have this woolly, giant, prehistoric pig with thick, rolling, curly hair all over it, and these ancient uh, Roman communities that are in the hidden parts of, uh, of Hungary had this, had this incredible pig. So uh, they kill it. It's a wedding day, and they're going to make dishes with every single part of this pig. So we have blood sausage being made, and we have that for breakfast, and they're frying up little pieces of the fat, and we have that in belly, and this and that, and the other thing. And they've collected all these little bits of sinewy, unusable parts, and they're putting it through the hand grinder and mincing it. And of course, I'm with the four old grandmothers who haven't taken a shower since Roosevelt was president. <laughs> and this lady, finally, you know, they, my goal is to taste things and then tell the viewers what it tastes like. At the end of the day, that's what I do for a living. And I will never forget sitting there with these four giant wooden bowls that have never been washed filled with different sausage mixtures. They're going to do like a crepinette out of one. They're going to put one into a stomach casing. They're going to put another one like inside the spleen and grill it. I mean, the usual bizarre foods fare. But one of the grandmothers is so proud of her concoction that she wants me to taste it. She's also hammered. I mean, by 10 in the morning, these people have all consumed about, I don't know, four or five mugs of their homemade hooch that's about 140 proof. And I, and I will never forget, I mean, her kerchief back, and we left this part in the show if you want to go watch it when you get home tonight on YouTube. She lifts up with her finger and comes at me. <laughs> And I literally, I'm sitting there and my, everyone is like nodding and there's a part of me that like wants to get it. And if you notice in the tape, if you go and watch it later on, I kind of lip the s- raw sausage <laughs> off of her finger. And I've, I've shown this to friends at my house and said, notice the look through my face that says, I will eat raw pork sitting out for nine hours in the hot sun 
on a you know beautiful day in the Hungarian countryside, but I will not let my lips tell that smell that or taste that nasty lady's finger. <laughs> it was so 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 bad. So I should tell you as an end note to this story. By two o'clock in the afternoon, we're all kicking ourselves for thinking such horrible things about these people when we hear a scream from the bus. And it's our driver, and he is literally has a foot against the, you know, that bus, you know, shh, door. And he has a foot trying to hold it in. And he's screaming for us because the kids, what they've done is they've lulled us for seven or eight hours <laughs> into a false sense of security. And every child in the village, no shit, like 22 of them have attacked both the front and the back of the bus, and they're crawling in the window, <laughs> looking like one of those horror movies, all those little clicking bugs everywhere. And they're literally taking seventy-five, eighty thousand dollar cameras, because oh I work for the place you go after you've bombed at ESPN4. It's called the Travel <laughs> Channel. And we have to, like, you can't fight children. You, I mean, you, you, you know what I'm saying? So the, yeah, we're like grown-ups, and we're like, how do you grab them? And the minute somebody says, well, it's the cameras, and they grab a kid, there's a grandma like right there screaming, they're hitting children, they're hitting children. So we had to try to grab our equipment and hold on to it like a bunch of spazzes. I haven't used that word in a long time. Can you say spaz? It's not very PC, but you know what I mean. I mean, you're holding on to it, but you don't want to touch a child because someone's going to take a picture with their phone. Andrew Zimmern beating up little sad eyes. <laughs> Gypsy kid. <laughs> I'm standing right here. <laughs> hey, you couldn't see my painting myself like the door was. <laughs> hey, Open you up. Hey, oh. hey Mom. Come on in. Your dad's open. Welcome yeah. home, Sean. Get into the house. Thanks, guys. Oh, there you go. Hi. Come on. Hi. This is my girlfriend, Hi. Janice. I'm Janice. Red Rover, Red Rover, send Janice right over. <laughs> Serious, you have real? to do it. Is that real? <laughs> They're not gonna take it easy on you. Okay, all right. I mean, full, full bore. Yeah. Wait, what does that mean? Well, I mean, like, full, like, should I go full, like as fast as I can? Do I don't... you want to get into the house? <laughs> it's your only way to get in. Full bore. <laughs> full bore. Are you serious? Yes, I told you. You, you should have stayed in New York. But you wanted to meet my family in Indiana. Well, here you fucking go. But that's all you said. That's all you said. We should stay Please in stop yelling at my house. Please stop yelling at my house. Please stop yelling at my house. He's only going to get deeper. I'm sorry. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Slow down. This is going to sound like clicking. Come on. Baby, you have to do this. We got you. We got you. It's not you. <laughs> it's okay. Look, I know it sounds stereotypical, but I, I know it. Look, all, everything they say about Canadians is true, all right? Is it really? It's all true? Yeah, yeah, put down your suitcases. You're not going. You're not going to Winnipeg. You're not going to Winnipeg. Okay. Right? I'm, not, I'm not afraid. Oh, you're not afraid of Canadians? No. They got free health care. <laughs> Boom! They don't care what the fuck they do. Free, free. <laughs> All aboard from Winnipeg. You are not going to the Winnipeg Folk Festival so long as I have breath. It can't be that bad. That's just cliches and stereotypes. All right. Don't Their chocolate doesn't taste more delicious than ours. <laughs> don't say I didn't warn you. Are you crying? A little bit. <laughs> All right, have fun. <laughs> Good luck. But you... Get on the bus! <laughs> You're gonna go, go! <laughs> I'm just gonna stay here and page through my Chinook book to find coupons of what I'm gonna do after you've been Canadized. <laughs> get on, go ahead. There's a door, it goes like that. Get out. Come on, get out. Get out. Go tss. There's the horn. Beep, beep. Go like that. Fan. Brrrr. Mutter when you move it. Help me. Help me. I'm made of a stick. 
training you for, Jimmy. <laughs> you didn't ever say that I was going to have to fight a man. But, have to fight a grown man? Well, but everything we've taught you is all added up to this. I'm the next step, kid. This is a this is a big step. This is this is different. This I, I mean we learned, we went to like alphabet to numbers to push-ups to this. <laughs> You're ready. I tie my laces. I have to tie his laces? Before That's why we taught you to tie. Uh, Hi, this is Brant Tamlings, and you're watching ESPN 8. Uh, tonight. <laughs> the man-child fight. Brant, <laughs> I need you to act like you care. Come on, Great let's time, see that honey. smile, Brant. We got a lot of good men beating up children action here. See if you can get an interview with the mom. She's yeah. clearly over 60, which means she reeks. <laughs> <laughs> and then old women just smell like shit. <laughs> well, I'm going to follow my nose to the uh, mother here. Uh, Hi, Brent. God damn it. <laughs> Go with it. Put it in your mouth. Put your Put it in your mouth, Brent. Put your yeah. In the third grade. Yeah. Yes, he showed a natural aptitude, so we just went for it. <laughs> hey, what's that over there? Bark! <laughs> <laughs> Don't throw that away, we're gonna use every single part. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I got a Mangalese pig! <laughs> The guy just sold it to me. He was like, you want a Mangalese pig? I was like, come on now, I hear most of them are, but this one was. You want a Mangalese pig? <laughs> hey, I heard most of them are. Oh, but this one is. Okay, all right. <laughs> is this another one of those stories where you're doing the voice that sounds like you for everyone, or did he really sound like you? Are you going to pay? <laughs> I'm going to pay with these $5 pills. That's how I like them. All righty, yay! Okay. And we both did this. I believe you now. I asked if you paid me five dollar bills. You did. Gave them to me. How do you want to be paid? It's five dollar bills. Okay. <laughs> and yes. Wait a second, you don't work for the people. No, 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 no. They just were very similar people. I don't believe. How can you not believe me? Because you're one of a kind. There's no one else like you. Not Baby. You. I love you so much. Let's eat a big piece. Okay. <laughs> your wife into boiling oil, you could just pay with Visa or MasterCard. Yeah, but I mean, we accept Visa, MasterCard, Diners Club. Yeah, but I've never owned a pair of Red Wing boots. I just thought that this would be the easiest way to do it. You could just pay money. What? You... But doesn't that lessen what's happening? Sir, your wife looks badly beaten, and uh, quite frankly, buying a McDonald's number two is really not that unique of an experience. You don't have to sacrifice her. Do you know you what a number two is? It's two cheeseburgers, a fries, and whatever beverage really you want. Whatever beverage I want. Well, think about that for Coke a second. products. I can choose anything I want to what drink. What I'm saying is it's not worth the well-being of your wife. You don't have to cut her up into a million pieces, then slap those pieces off into a shark's mouth one at a time while you pee on it. You is don't it, have to do that. Yeah, but life, life isn't about just my experiences. It's about your experiences. Experiences too. It's nothing I want to see. I am. These Girl Scout cookies are three dollars and fifty cents a box. I will shave my wife's head and feed it to you. No. <laughs> That's not how it works. That's not how it works. You just keep now. You listen to me. We are behind the Jorgensen sisters. You do whatever it takes to sell some cookies. Yeah, how's it going, Frida? I hear you selling cookies this year. Jorgensen's out. <laughs> Hi, girls. Are you two supposed to be? Are you? How old are you? I'm 19. She's 19, too, because we're twins. Mm -hmm. 
You guys, How old would you like us to be, though? Well, nine, <laughs> 19 pretty much works for me. <laughs> What's it going to take to get you into these pins? <laughs> I don't know what you mean by into the Thin Mints. Wait, do I have to have the package that's open already that you guys are trying to feed me? Oh, oh my God! How old are you really? <laughs> I don't think that's a real thing that happened. What? No, I guess. You're making that story They were both up. wearing, they were just wearing the Girl Scout sashes and berets, but the sash happened to cover up everything that wouldn't have allowed them to go out in public. <laughs> that seems really Possible. Then they fed me each Thin Mint one at a time. I ate the whole pack and didn't get diarrhea later. Are you sure you didn't just see that on the internet? Are you sure that's a real thing that happened to you? Smell my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Take that as a no. I've eaten several. <laughs> I've eaten two types of porcupines on two different continents. And I will tell you right now that the northern Minnesotan porcupine that we ate in my Christmas special, it's about yay big, is nothing compared to the giant African porcupine that can that can be up to 125 pounds. It's like a small car. When it raises these giant, I mean, yeah, the quills are about this big, and they all go up. And this thing, it only is about this high off the ground. What? And when you're standing there, and two or three of them charge you, and they waddle, <laughs> and they're coming at you, you're frozen, <laughs> frozen to the ground. And you realize you've climbed down into their lair, which is this, like, internecine, you know, horrible little freeway of tunnels that they carve out of the hard African desert in Botswana. It's one of the scariest things that's ever happened to me. Thank God there was some 19-year-old kid with a spear who shoved it down this thing's throat so that we could eat it. <laughs> so because, because the Jeune in Botswana, one of the world's first peoples, in fact, they believe that man started by walking out from their watering hole in search for meat with more fat in it, which is shocking considering that the, the African porcupine, the giant one, because it gets so cold in the desert during the, the chilly season, has a carpet of fat underneath those quills. You know, the quills are the hair, right? So you pluck all the quills out and you skin it and you have this, I mean, it looks like pork belly all around it. It's just fat. And they take this giant sweater of porcupine fat, and the Jeuntoisie build a huge fire, and then they die down to like a wheelbarrow's full of coals, and then they, four of them, hold this thing, and they drop the porcupine fat sweater on top of the coals, and they let it burn on one side, and when it's sizzling and bubbling through the other one, but still raw on the top, they pull it off, and everyone sits around on the ground, and you cut little pieces off, and you eat it. Is it delicious? Fantastic. I said, what are you doing with all the meat? They said, we threw it over the tree to make soup with it later. Who needs the meat when you have all this fantastic fat? By the way, this was translated in clicks and whistles. Today. <laughs> <laughs> the moral of the story is always carry an extra power bar. 